Hey everyone, this is Cassidy. I've been working on this video for six days, and I was supposed to release it yesterday, but that whole awful press conference happened, and I wanted to get that information to you as soon as possible. So this one got delayed till today. However, I think it's actually good timing. The fact that Dick and Jim want to pretend that Alex was only found guilty because of some alleged tampering by a court clerk is laughable. Alex was found guilty because he's guilty. This video has a reenactment of what I think happened. I prepared a trailer to show you what to expect on this episode, but I want to put the same trigger warning here as I have on the actual video, because this one is about the murders, and though animated, a bit graphic. My channel usually focuses on the financial crimes and legal documents, not the murders, but this one is all about the murders, so please don't watch if you're not comfortable with that. It I'm going to separate these into three timelines. First, I'm going to start with Paul's timeline, and we're using phone data for this. Did Alex make up an excuse to send Paul into the feed shed? Hey Paul, could you go get the whatever whatever from the feed shed real quick? So Paul is now in the feed shed, which is right next to the kennels. He's standing sideways. He's picked up his phone, read a message, and was probably preparing an answer. Completely engrossed in his phone, as his dad steps into the shed, his body didn't turn, according to the pathologist. Did he turn his head and look at his father? We don't know. We know. Maggie's timeline. Maggie's phone registered no steps once she walked out to the cart, so presumably she left it in the cart as she did whatever she was doing at the kennels. We Something happens at 8.49.20. Her screen comes on. It's not just a backlight on notification. It actually unlocks. The re- puts that rifle down and reaches for another one. Even more bewildering, he's coming towards her. Alex's timeline. Alex, now he's got to switch guns to create that theory of two killers that he's already planned. The second gun is leaned against the wall, just outside. As he's lowering the first gun to the ground, he's startled by Paul, who's about to step out of the shed. He's not dead. This is all wrong. He turns toward Maggie, who's screaming. She backs into the cart. He fires. It hits the ground. Paul hadn't seen it coming, but Maggie has now. The element of surprise is gone. She continues backing up. She's in front of the cart now, but they both know she has nowhere to go. I'll be back tonight at 8 Eastern Time. Hope to see you all there. 